Now, briefly, what causes the recurring boom and bust cycles, and what is the role banks are playing? Banks create the money supply, and you can divide uh, the money creation into two streams. You may not be aware, but not everything is in, in GDP. We talk about the economy and the need to have GDP growth and so on, and the, the media report uh, the latest GDP growth figures, but GDP actually um, includes very specific things. Um, let's call it the real economy. What it does not include is financial transactions, asset transactions, property transactions, the housing market, the trans transactions, they are not included. The reason for that is actually fairly um, sensible because GDP, the, the fundamental definition is value added, value added transactions. So that's the verdict by the statisticians on the financial sector, on the financial transactions. It doesn't add value. Uh, why? Well, it's a zero sum game. If you're gaining through a financial transaction, somebody must have lost the same amount. It is a zero sum game. So the more people are playing financial markets, or asset markets in general, uh, the more unproductive the economy gets because in total it plus minus zero. You just, it's divide and rule, just playing people off against each other, they're betting against each other all day. <laughs> um, anyway, so we've got these two types of transactions and the, the money supply and the money creation which takes place through bank credit as we saw, C, bank credit, credit creation, needs to be divided into these two streams. So credit for the real economy for GDP, that's real circulation credit, and credit for transactions that do not contribute to GDP, um, non-GDP transactions, financial circulation credit. What you then can identify is the good credit creation and the bad credit creation. First of all, bank credit for financial transactions, this is the, the box here at the bottom right, asset credit creation. It doesn't contribute to GDP, but it, it has an impact. When banks lend for um, the purchase of ownership rights, which is what it is, asset transactions, somebody's purchasing rights, ownership rights, then because this is also money creation, this bank lending is money creation, you are creating new money and you're pumping it into one particular market, asset markets, financial markets. What has to happen? Of course, prices there have to rise. And that's the asset inflation. This leads then to boom-bust cycles because as the asset prices rise, more people want to take out loans, the banks are happy to, um, to fuel that. But it's very fragile because if asset prices fall, only by 10% the entire banking system is bust. But of course in the boom time, as we also heard, asset prices rise by much more than 10%. They can double, triple, quadruple housing prices, stock prices, and um, from that peak, if you then just have a, a retrenchment of 10-15%, um, you will get non-performing assets and the banks cannot take many of those because they have so little equity. The equity is that, uh, is, is, is that part of the balance sheet that is, has to be used to make up for losses, for non-performing assets. And it's far less than 10%. So banks are quickly bust. So if you have bank credit for financial transactions, for, which of course are unproductive, uh, it's also unsustainable and will result in banking crises and recessions following that. Um, if credit is used for consumption, of course you get consumer price inflation that's also unsustainable, unproductive. But if credit is used for productive purposes, investment credit, um, you can have growth without inflation and without financial crises. And that's true not just when you have high unemployment to start with and then you increase productive credit. It's true even when you're at full employment. You can still have more growth um, without inflation. We won't have time to go into details if you're interested perhaps in the Q&A part, um, but it has to do with, with what it actually means to have growth. It is actually an accounting fiction because any physicist can explain to you there's no growth. Um, you know, how can there be growth? Energy 
exists and can't be created and you can't add to it, you can only transform it. So it's an accounting fiction created to suit the banking system, surprise, surprise, but maybe we have time to return to this. Now, credit for non-GDP transactions, financial transactions, um, therefore creates these asset bubbles and crises and just a few examples how this, how this works. Um, so in Japan, this credit for real estate was only 15% of banks lending in the early 80s and then that doubled to 30%. Um, and of course, that's the percentage of total lending, while total lending itself also exploded. So we had a massive, massive credit bubble. Um, but it's, it's nothing new. This has always happened um, in other places like in the US in the 20s, Scandinavian countries in the 80s, uh, the, the so-called Asian crisis was the same, banks lending for non-GDP transactions, property, UK, Ireland, Portugal, Greece. If you want to see what, what happened in Ireland, on this graph here on the left side, we've got um, the pink line is GDP, so it's fairly modest, nominal GDP below 10% naturally, but bank credit was expanding by, you know, between 2004 and 2007, around 30 percent. And it, you don't have to be a so-called trained central banker to know that if money creation is expanding at this pace, way ahead of the real economy, well by definition you know it's not going into the real economy, it's not in nominal GDP rates because that's much lower, it must go into asset markets. And it's always the same story. So it's quite obvious and quite easy to predict then, well, this is an asset bubble and you're going to have a banking bust um, as a result. Same of course in Spain, 15-20% growth um, of bank credit, Portugal, Greece, similar stories. 